Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and thanks for joining me. My name's Nurse Richard the Wax Wizard. Strap yourselves in. This is epic. <laughs> it, well, I'm not going to lie. This was, oh, it's up there in the, some of the most difficult procedures I have ever done in my career, which was really years long. Fair old while, let's put it that way. Um, now, I got a call last week from a daughter of this patient and she said um, she'd seen me uh, I, I, she'd read the reviews or she'd seen me online somewhere um, which uh, quite a few people do which is great you know being out there in social media has its pros and cons uh, the cons you get a lot of keyboard warriors the, the pros are a lot of people get to know who you are and know about you and see your work um, so she'd found me there and she said I wonder if you could come and see me mum been having terrible trouble for a long time um, and it was sorry the camera's just fallen down a little bit let me straighten it up <laughs> there we go. Um, been having terrible trouble for a long time um, <clears throat> and I think she'd had them done pre-covid and uh, I think she used to get it done quite regularly um, but after covid people tend to fall off the waiting list unfortunately and it's difficult to get back on and life gets in the way and the mum had just kind of become accustomed to not hearing very well at all but it got to a point where it said we're going to have to do something about this um, so she searched around and found me and so she, she phoned me up um, she said no she, she wouldn't be able to come to your clinic because my clinic's upstairs um, not got a lift um, but the um, I said oh yeah that's fine I do home visits quite often you know um, but this lady lived in Liverpool, quite near to the centre of Liverpool. Now, I'm not that far away from it. Where, where I live, you see, you've got Manchester here, Liverpool here, I'm slap bang in the middle, which is great being right in the middle of two big cities. Um, but at the time of the day I'd agreed to go, it was uh, it took me about three quarters of an hour, 45 minutes to get there. Traffic, there's always traffic around here. It's a nightmare. Um, so yeah, it took me a fair old while to get there. And when, when I got there, I thought, oh, please, let's just hope it's a nice, straightforward, simple one, because uh, I've got to get back, I've got to do uh, things with the kids, I've got uh, some meetings in the evening to do with the rugby team I coach, and so I thought, just a, a little quick one would be really nice. But, how wrong was I? It was the most difficult one. Certainly this year, if not for the last couple of years, and you're probably already seeing the reasons why it's so difficult and it was yeah, only a couple of seconds into the procedure where I was uh, pretty convinced that this was keratosis obturans. And your heart sinks a little bit and you think, oh, <laughs> here we go. Believe it or not, she reported this was the better of the two ears. She reported the other one was worse, <laughs> which when I was halfway through this, uh, I'm thinking, oh no, how much worse is the other one? How much more difficult is that going to be? It was just so difficult, it was so stuck. Now, for those of you who watch a lot of these channels or watch mine, you'll know what keratosis obturans is. Um, but for those of you who don't, I'm not going to go too in detail um, as to what it is and the, the, a lot of the fancy science behind it. There's other channels you can go for that because they do a lot better than me. But the long and short of it is, um, the skin in the ear canal and the outer layer of the eardrum, it's constantly shedding. Um, as your skin does everywhere, you know, your, your skin sheds on every single part of your body because it's constantly re regenerating, growing new skin, getting rid of the old skin. Uh, but when it's anywhere else in your body, it flakes off, washes off in the shower, um, so you've not constantly got thick, thick layers of dead skin all over you. Uh, some people have, but that's a different condition completely that. Um, and what happens in the ear, uh, if, uh, if the body hasn't, uh, wasn't designed to do this, um, you'd, everybody would constantly have a, uh, an ear full of skin because it's a cul-de-sac, isn't it? It's one-way street, if your eardrum's in the way. So if it just sheds in the ear, imagine that's your ear canal, it's just shedding and it's just getting layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. So the body's very clever. It thought of a way around this. It designed it to move sideways. It migrates sideways, including the top layer of the eardrum as well. Um, but in this particular condition, keratosis obturans, that doesn't tend to happen. 
So what does happen is it, it just falls off like that. It just falls off and stays where it is. It's not really moving sideways at all. Um, and you can tell, if you've been doing this long enough, you can tell pretty quickly um, when it is when it is keratosopterans because it's pretty much all skin. There's very little of the, um, of the oily part of earwax. <clears throat> it's just thick sheets of dead skin. It tends to be uh, paler around the outside. You get like a silvery, um, the, the fresher layer of skin on the outside, and it's, it's like a rubber ball. I know that you'll describe it as a rubber ball, but I can't think of a better way of describing it. So I'm going to pinch his because um, it, it's it's perfect analogy. And the closer to the centre of the ball you get, the darker it gets. You know, so it goes from uh, from whitish, silverish, to this kind of creamy colour, to brown, to black in the middle because the stuff that's in the middle is the bit that's been shedded uh, earlier so it's, it's it's been there the longest therefore the most dead and when skin dies it, it, it changes color it, go, it goes black um so this is still quite pale as you can see these layers here so i'm nowhere near the center of this but but the problem with it is because it's shedding the ear it's it there's a lot of energy um, in these big balls. So what's what's happening, you can probably see it here, it's a decent example of it, is even when you get a, a decent grip of it, which is difficult, and you're trying to pull it down the ear canal, it just springs back. It says, oh, no, 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 come, get back here you, get back here you. It just springs back, you can see it doing it there. Pulling it, and as soon as it lets go, it just springs back. And it's so difficult to move. Some are easier than others. But this was by far one of the most difficult keratosopterans I've, I've done. And like I said, believe it or not, this was the better ear. <laughs> um, so it, it, it's painstaking. I do apologise, it's a very, very long video. It might be a bit of a difficult watch for some of you, but it is what it is. Rome wasn't built in a day. These things take time, unfortunately. So as you can see, we've already tried a few things. We started off with a suction. Reason for that is there was no caps around the outside at all. It was just completely full. So I was just trying to loosen it up a little bit so I could maybe get the hook in around the side and separate it, disrupt it a little bit, uh, which we did a little bit. Um, but with this one in particular, because this one, because she thought this wasn't her worst ear, she had not been oiling it that much. So this was probably the drier of the two. The other one was like chewing gum. It was horrible, absolutely horrible. Um, so the only way of getting this dry stuff out, I found, was, was with the forceps, a lot of it. But unfortunately, because you've got, imagine you've got like, uh, have you ever seen them elastic band balls? It's like those. Uh, and, you know, you, you're literally peeling away each elastic band off, uh, off the ball at a time. The ball barely changes size, but each one it slowly, slowly, slowly shrinks. And that's kind of what's, what's happening here. Because I'm grabbing hold of it, but I'm not able to pull the whole ball out. You're just getting each layer off so when i grab it and pull some of it out it just takes away one layer of, of skin and there's many 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 layers of skin in this one which is why it takes so long i think i think it's nearly 40 minutes long something like this now this is a good grip but again as you can see when it comes to pulling it it's quite narrow here as well which made it even harder than it needed to be uh, she was only petite, this lady. Lovely lady. She was of a, of a good age. Let's just put it that way. Lovely lady. Very patient, very still. <clears throat> Tend to find the older ladies are that way. You know, they just uh, don't complain about anything. They just stay still, keep calm, carry on, crack on with it, do what you need to do, you know, which, which is great, you know. It would have took a lot longer if she hadn't have been as, uh, as, as, as helpful as she was. As was her daughter as well, because at some point she was helping me by holding her ear open. More so in the other one, because that was even narrower than this one. So we're just pulling it out sheet by sheet. And it's, it's beyond frustrating. And how we were doing this as well, like I said, it was a, it was a home visit, so it wasn't in the ideal uh, a position. Well, my knees were killing at the end of it. What had happened was um, 
she was on a like a, a a dining table chair in the middle of her front room and i was just kneeling by the side of her um which we found to be the best position because if people are on a like a couch or an armchair um there's lots of things in the way and they're usually a bit too low down so i find it a, a dining chair is okay like i could have been sat on a dining chair next to her as well i just find it more comfortable believe it or not just to be uh, kneeling upright <coughs> So what I'm trying to do here with the forceps is, you can only get them so, so wide, you can't get them wide enough to get on this. Uh, so I'm using the bottom jaw of the forcep to try and scoop under it, try and scoop under it to lift it up and then pinch it. Uh, here comes a good one. Now I'm hoping this might be the straw that brought the camels back, so to speak. So let's grab that. But it, it, it was a shocking amount that came out of this and there was a fair amount uh, went into the uh, suction tank as well. But the, the ruler, well it's not a ruler shot, it's a tissue shot. I didn't bring the ruler with me. Is uh, it, It's quite interesting at the end. Again, here's another lovely sheet, but again, just snaps off. Because obviously it, when it gets to the entrance of the ear or the exit, depends which way you're going, it, obviously it, it, it's slightly narrower. So quite commonly, it just snaps. But you, if you pull it really, really slowly, sometimes you can avoid that happening, but uh, it's just not been possible with this one. Yeah, you might want to go and get yourself a brew, get yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, with it being such a long one. Cheers, got mine. Well, I'm not on brand, am I? I've got my plain mug. Should have been drinking through one of these, shouldn't I? <laughs> Which incidentally, I, I don't think you can get at the moment because I'm having somebody redesign um, my merchandise shop and, and the website. So I don't think you'd be able to get them anyway now if you wanted to, <laughs> but um, it will be coming soon. I am uh, I'm assured. Now, you can see now, can't you? It's a lot darker. It's going towards this brownish colour. Not quite black, but this is a good one that's just being brought forward there. And again, just snaps off. So you have to have a lot of patience. Um, not patience in people sat in your chair in your clinic. You have to be, be very patient when it comes to removing stuff like this. I think I already had put some oil in as well, I think with after about a minute or two, just to see if that helped a little bit. I'm not sure it did, to be honest, but it was worth a try. We literally threw everything at it. But here's what looks like we've got to the centre of the ball now, haven't we? That we were talking about. And once we've got this moving, I seem to remember, it, the rest of it wasn't too difficult. But again, just, it's, it doesn't want to fit. Ah, oh, it was difficult, yeah. No, I remember that. <laughs> we were at a different stage than I thought we were. So it is a good example of what I was saying about the, uh, the colour change. I think I bring this forward, this dark a bit forward, but what's preventing that from coming out is there's, there's another fresher layer that's just above it, which I think in a minute I'm just going to go over the top of this because it's not coming out, and then try and drag you. Just see the little white bits at the top there? Because that bit's stuck. Yeah, and I'm giving it, wiggling it to within an inch of its life there. Yeah, and again, one of the strands of skin just breaks away. So let's see if we can grab that with the forceps. You can see it's even, even darker still, can't you? Uh, just in the centre of that. Again, I'm just trying to lift it up a little bit. In the vain hope that the whole thing comes out in one go, it doesn't. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Speaking of in one go as well, I have to keep an eye on the time here because I know this thing is 40 minutes long and I started it when um, I had a, a small gap in clinic um, and I've got a patient due in in about 20 minutes time. So <laughs> this commentary might well be in two parts. 
if I hear some, someone coming in through the through the door, I'll, I'll, I'll bid you adieu, then I'll come back and finish it off later. <laughs> Do you know, I'm not even sure that there's enough memory on my phone to, to mem enough memory on the camera to store one this long. No, I have done one one hour long before, haven't I? Which was episode 100. Uh, here's what I was talking about before. So you've got the black core of this ball, and then you can see to the top of it, it goes a bit paler. Now I've got hold of the black core, but that's not coming. It's not coming. Uh, it's moving forward a little bit, but I don't think that's going to come out until we get the fresher stuff, which is just above it there. There you go, can you see? Here's a really good example of the, um, the springiness. So I'm pulling it forward, and then you'll, did you see it just re retract then? I'm pulling it forward, and then yeah, I'm letting go of it to try and get another grip, and you'll see it kind of, it's moving backwards. It's like, is it, is it by magic, isn't it? It's like it's being sucked back inwards. And this is why these are so difficult, because of the, 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 the pressure of it. Doesn't want to leave the air. She's made it feel very welcome. And yet it's only three, could be three and a half, four years or so worth. I think she was very reluctant, well, as, as was um, a family when they were trying to find somebody to do this as well, because uh, it was in this year, actually, that she'd been to see somebody in public health. Um, her words, not mine. And she said that the young girl was, the young girl seemed like she didn't really know what she was doing. I think she was quite inexperienced and quite young and she perforated uh, her eardrum. Now I think this was with um, syringe, uh, with, the, with the water method, or irrigation should I say. Uh, and you'll see that scar on this afterwards. So she, uh, she was very reluctant to, um, to, to, to go back to the same place that she went before, but the waiting list was huge anyway. Probably wouldn't have been able to get in. You'll just see the springiness of this as well, can't you? Trying to pull it back in again. So that's why they were quite, they did the due diligence, as, as anybody should. Um, even though I was a, a fair distance away, I, I kind of sensed that they uh, um, were quite keen for me to come. So I, I was more than happy to help. Cost them a bit more, mind you. Because <laughs> it's, a, but you know, if, if people are happy to pay for a, for a service, then, 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 then so be it, you know. Got to be a fair price, considering obviously it's a, it's a lot further away than I would normally travel. And I got a little tip as well, because it was so difficult, which was very nice. So if you're watching this, thank you for that. It was very much appreciated. But just just seeing uh, this lady happy and here and again, um, it, was, it was all the thanks I needed. It was uh, it's, it's very rewarding. When people say, well, why on earth do you like doing things like this? When you bear in mind all the skills that you've got from your past career. Um, and I said to a lot of people, there are very few quick wins in healthcare. <laughs> Not that this was a quick win. Um, but when um, uh, somebody's got something wrong with them, it's like you see a doctor, see a nurse, what have you. You say, take the tablet for two weeks, see if you feel better. Um, stick your leg in this bandage for a month, see if it feels better. Stick your arm in this cast for six weeks, see if it feels better. Try this inhaler for a couple of months, see if you feel better. And it's, there's, there's no quick wins, but this is one. Somebody comes to you, can't hear a thing, very life affecting problem, and you can fix it at the appointment, ordinarily. Um, so, and that's why I like doing it. it it's rewarding to see the, uh, the reactions of people are absolutely priceless, you know. I've even had tears in the procedure chair, <laughs> quite commonly actually, because some people are uh, resigned to the fact that they can never hear again. They just assume that they've um, that they've lost their hearing, or you know, they're going deaf, you know. And when you can be that, they think you're a miracle worker that you've prevented that happening. You, you've just pulled something out of the rear, you know. But still, that's why it's rewarding. That's why I like doing it. So as you can see, brought the blacker one a bit further forward. And again, it's just needing to be broken away in pieces, coming away in stages. So we're going back in with the um, forceps again. 
This was a good one. I think this was the last chunk. Look at that one. Wow, that was it. Jet black, that one. And he's raking up. Looking surprisingly okay, actually. I don't think that you can see the perforation there. Uh, where it, well, it, it's, it's a scar now, but that's where it was perforated from uh, a, a water jet. I don't know how that was possible, no. to be honest, because the water jet, when you're doing irrigation, it shouldn't be pointing straight at the, the, the eardrum. Um, it, it's like that, and then it's it, it's angled. I can't do it on that finger. I can do it on this one because this finger's double jointed. There you go. Look at that one. Sorry if that freaks anybody out. <laughs> but yeah, it's shaped like that. It goes up and it curls upwards, like that one. <laughs> they both do that. I don't know why. Anybody else do that? <laughs> can't do it on any others, but can do it on that. Anyway, strange. A strange special talent to have, isn't it? Eh? A, bend, a finger that bends both ways. <laughs> Anyway, my point is the jet, the water jet, I shape like that so it goes up there and it shoots up to the top of the, to the roof of the ear canal. Theory is it gets behind the plug uh, and then fills it up from, uh, from behind the plug and forces it out. So how, I don't know how I managed to perforate an eardrum with it. Sometimes what some people can do, they might well uh, lift the angle of it up so it's coming down like this and then the, the angled bit is actually then pointing straight if you're holding it like that like that so then the water shooting out straight it shouldn't be done that way there's no need but I've certainly never perforated any eardrums don't intend starting there but I do get asked if I ever do use water and the answer is yes um, so is that common I'd maybe say Two, three times a week it might be the, the and it, it's really useful for um, for certain things very useful if there's um, some sloppy earwax that's just it's just like a, a a mush it's really useful for that kind of stuff um, useful if there's stuff on the drum and you, you you're weighing up the pros and cons of going that near someone's eardrum with some sharp steel implements i think is it just safer to give this a rinse Often it is. And you see it going in again with the hook here, just trying to disrupt it, separate it from the sides a bit, just a vain attempt to break it up a little bit. As you can see, this other ear, it's oh, it's narrower. It's a bit hairier as well. So the uh, the optics aren't optics aren't great to start with. That does get better, I promise. But um, I'm not plucking these these hairs out of a. Uh, of a lady's ears just so you lot can get a clearer view I'm sorry <laughs> it's not going to happen but I think in a while you can just see how small and narrow this is those those hooks are absolutely tiny uh, I don't think you, some some people don't really appreciate the size of these things uh, when you when you're doing this it's magnified a lot so I think we're reverting back to this suction here now we've disrupted it a little bit then hopefully I can get a semi-decent grip and start to wiggle it and start to hopefully loosen it and move it around a bit I think she'd add a lot more it wasn't quite as dry this one she'd add a lot more oil in this one uh, but you'll see what that did to the plug um, when we get a bit deeper down because it had, it had turned it into like a horrible chewing gum consistency it was Oh, it was awful. <laughs> it was awful to get rid of. But I know I like a challenge. Um, like I say to many, many of my patients, if they were no two ears the same, uh, if they were all easy, my day would be very boring. It would be a bit less stressful, but, but it would be quite boring. I think I did, I did post it in another video uh, a couple of days ago. I might not have been released yet, I'm not sure when I'm going to put this out. Um, of, um, we call it the unicorn earwax. And the reason it's called that is because it's the one that hardly ever happens where you stick your tube in, it jumps in it, you pull it out, and it takes like two seconds per ear. <laughs> That's the unicorn earwax. So this is the opposite of that. What you would call that, I don't know. You can already see a bit of this chewing gum consistency in that one I was just stretching it and pulling it so I'm going back in with the hook again and again in a vain hope that it can disrupt it it did just pull a little bit off there so that might help 
but I'm just finding it really hard to to get this hook in. I mean, for a start, it's it's really hard to see uh, because of the, the the narrowness and also the hairs. But there's just very little room to manoeuvre. Very little room at all. So I'm going to try, because it worked quite well at this point on the other ear, I'm going to try the forceps in this ear, but because this had been oiled so well, it just cuts through it um, like a knife through butter. Apps, you know, you can see it's got a little string out, but I would be there all day doing it with the forceps with this one. See, decent grip there, just sheds straight through it. It's, it's just too soft, unfortunately. So we're just going to have to persevere uh, with the suction. Which again, as some of you will know if you watch a lot of videos, the home visit suction machine is not quite as powerful as the other one. I'll be honest, I don't think the other one would have done this any quicker. It was that difficult. But there you go, have a look at this chewing gum now. And here's a good example of, of, of again, the pressure that's in these big balls as it's trying to be pulled backwards into the ear. just so difficult you can see it springing back but even if it's just a little strand that disappears into the tube and a little bit it's, it's, it's what you can't see that's going on behind here it is kind of the reason why we're doing this it's it's slowly being there you go decent bit coming out there it's slowly separating it and you've got a bit of a hold and you're shaking and wiggling frantically it's it's separating the fresh layer of skin from from the ear canal I'm kind of working it around the bends, but it's more about loosening it at the moment. And yeah, and you can see why this was the ear that was uh, most affected, that she felt was the worst one. I think it, it, possibly the oil may have made it worse, because it's made it into the, like this chewing gum consistency. She couldn't hear a thing, absolutely nothing through this at all. It's no wonder really, is it? Obviously when you can see all this. It's, it's not coming out in, uh, in one piece. These things rarely do. You can see the different strands there, can't you? The thick layers of dead skin, uh, the individual ones. Um, someone's asked if you can prevent this or cure this. No. Nope. Is the honest answer. Uh, it's going to keep happening. Uh, so anybody, oh, by the way, she had been seen on oh, numerous occasions. So just keep an eye on that. Numerous occasions by uh, other professionals, and I'm not once been told that she's got this condition. I don't know if any of them would, didn't know about it or didn't spot it. I'm not quite sure. But um, yeah, it's the first time that uh, that she'd been told that she'd got it in the first place. But but no, you can't. There's not a lot you can do, you just need to make sure that you get it cleaned regularly. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to be getting another call in a few months. Can you come around again? <laughs> just to keep on top of it. And just to prevent it getting to a, a point like this again, which I'll be more than happy to do. Um, there are some, some drops, I believe, that, that can help. Like chewing gum. oil's not, not great uh, with something like this. But I believe that... Um, Sometimes a bit of sodium bicarbonate every couple of weeks. That can help. Yeah, you should see but the long job is you've just got to make sure that you, you, you right, clear it out. Because it, um, and again, as some of you all know, it can cause uh, some quite serious complications. Keratosis trans if it's not something that you've come across before. It can, now she was experiencing a bit of pain. That's, that's, one of the uh, the key indicators that, that that's what it is. She was getting a bit of discomfort in this one. Um, not surprisingly, really, uh, when you consider, because you can imagine it's getting this as as the each layer of skin sheds, the ball is growing and growing and growing and growing, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and that starts to put pressure on the ear canal. It can actually widen the ear canal um, and, it, uh, and remodel it, so to speak, and change shape of it. You know, and then it can. Uh, start penetrating you know through the skin into the bones 
uh, it's surrounding the ear and obviously that's that's in your head and as soon as you start getting things going in messing around with bones and infiltrating things in your head it, you can get potential serious complications as you can imagine but as long as it, it's it's you make sure that it, it's cleaned out regularly that's very unlikely to happen and there are, there are different grades of it as well now i can't see any obvious change of shape in her i know it's the first time i've I've seen her. She might well have had a small one in the past. I'm not quite sure, but um, it looks surprisingly okay. So it's probably a, a low-grade one because it, it she had always had it cleaned out, but never been told that that's what the condition was. So it's probably a low-grade. Now, finally, starting to get somewhere with this one now. See, it's a bit dark here. I probably should have turned the light up a little bit. But uh, I was I was, I was, was going for that long. It was a bit of a marathon effort. I mean, you're seeing 40 minutes worth here. What you don't see is every time I come out, I come out of the air, I've got to obviously get the, get the plug off the end of it, uh, get it on a tissue, uh, give the camera a wipe, and uh, flush the tube through. You've got to dip the, dip the suction tube in a, in a little jug of water to run it through when it keeps getting blocked. Then if that doesn't work, you've got a little steel rod that you can poke in it to unblock it. All kinds of things that you, that, that you don't see, you know, so they are, I think... Oops! Nope, there wasn't a little glitch in the system. The battery on my camera went. <laughs> That's how long this video is. Um, oh, it was annoying as well. Uh, I can't even remember what I was talking about. Something to do with unblocking the suction tubes anyway. But yeah, what happened, I'm obviously watching this on a laptop and I'm recording it through a mobile phone and I thought I had plenty of battery and plenty of memory enough to be able to record such a long episode what I'd forgotten is that when it gets to 10% it goes on low power mode and part of low power mode, power mode is that it decides it doesn't need the video camera on it anymore <laughs> but I've quickly charged it up in between patients and I'm going to finish it off here interesting little gooey lump there coming out interestingly enough I did ask for your opinions on what we should do for episode 200, which I can't believe is not that far away, because um, I think 100 will take some topping. Somebody said, can we see your outtakes? Um, and the answer is yes, you can see them. That They're already out there. <laughs> they're all there. I've never, yeah, hand on heart here, I've never done two takes on anything. If something goes wrong during the video, it goes wrong during the video. Uh, and I'll leave it in there no matter what happens. You know, it used to happen a, a bit more um, in the early days when I was getting a bit more used to all this technical stuff, which I'm still not great with, but I'm getting the hang of it. So that there's not been any, any balls up for quite a while. But uh, you'll still get the odd one. So yeah, no outtakes because they're already in all of the videos. I think the most things that went wrong are on, a, on an episode that's called It's All Going Wrong. I can't remember what went wrong, but almost everything that could went wrong. Um, so we're nearly at the end of this one anyway. And what you can see, it's a bit dark. I probably should have turned the light up, but I was, I was already in the thick of it. Um, the decision I'm, I'm, I'm having to make with myself now is not just yet, but in a minute, you, is I'm obviously getting nearer to the eardrum now. Now this plug uh, extends all the way to the, to the patient's eardrum. Uh, more so than, than, than the other one. The other one wasn't quite like as bad as this. So that's why she was a lot deafer in this one. But you have to you have to be careful because obviously a full size tube near an eardrum is not ideal. But I'll be honest with you, a plug like this, there's no way it's gonna it's gonna come out even with um, a fine end tube. It might, but it would take you absolutely ages. Uh, so yes, it is close, and you can just see. How close we are now because it's just revealed a little bit of the eardrum there so I'm having to be uh, I'll, very careful which obviously we are anyway but I'm having, a, I'm having a discussion in my own head amongst should you be here with this should you not be here with this um, now I wouldn't advise just anybody puts a full-size tube that far down there but if you're, if you're confident and you're quite experienced and you know what you're doing which not blowing me old trumpet, but I've been doing this a, a fair few years. Um, 
then in, in my opinion it's okay if it's the only way that you can get something like this out and I'm pretty sure it was the only way you could get something like this out I wouldn't dream of irrigating this here because she's got a history of perforations and you shouldn't you shouldn't irrigate in here um, put a bit of oil in here because I could see it was it was like kind of stuck to the eardrum this very last bit um, but what's happened is I've gone in for that another little bit from the side has just jumped in that I didn't realise was there just at the uh, hidden around the corner there and at the base of the Ekadal you'll see there's more of this chewing gum type stuff it's horrible sticky stuff and uh, yeah it was a bit it was a bit of a bonus this I mean I'd have probably spotted it anyway when I was uh, checking it out after I'd uh, got a bit deeper down but uh, yeah it just jumped in said don't forget about me <laughs> so, so we didn't and yeah it's very uh, it's very indicative of keratosop trans especially when you see the, these the white uh, these white spongy bits all the way around the outside of this plug but again still sticking with the full size tube here because it is closer to the eardrum but I can tell that this plug down here is really thick especially this bit I'm just trying to peel out there and I think once I've got that bit then I think we'll reassess and we'll think should we be moving down to the fine end now at this point which I think is what I did did manage to get every little speck of this to be honest with you I mean by, by the end of this like I said nearly an hour, an hour and a half I think we've both had enough <laughs> my knees were killing me uh, but this, this lady, she was so patient, God bless her. It was a, a model patient. I did just see the eardrum flex there a little bit. It just flexes as I try to tug on that. But it is coming, so I'm still confident enough to stay there. And I think one last go with this one. And let's see if we can get a big chunk to come away hopefully sneak in from around that corner as well. So again, approaching very slowly, being very cautious. Even looking back, I can, when I, when I watch these back, I can, uh, I know what I'm thinking in my head, you know. And I'm going down slowly somewhere, I just pause in for a second, I can tell it's because I'm thinking, what should you do here? I'm certainly at this point, yeah, I've just pulled it back and I'm having to think, I think, hmm. You know, I think I get that bit there, I'll do a switch, do a switch now. But it looks pretty thick, uh, and, and that's why I've decided to stick with this. And you certainly don't stay on there long, just dab it, dab it and pull it away as quickly as you can if you get a good grip. And I think we've proved to be right, you can just, there you go. Start seeing, she didn't feel any of that at all, but as you can see it's revealed a good portion of the eardrum there. So let's go and get that one there. I think at this point I've uh, changed tubes because, like I said, the, the, most of the eardrum has been revealed now. So I've gone down to the fine end tube. They just had a little squeak. That's why I just pulled that back for a second. But hopefully I can just peel this bit away. This was a good one from what I remember. Again, you can just see me pulling, really pulling with some force as well, let me tell you. Because it's so stuck to the eardrum, you know, and bits of that will be the, uh, the, the top layer of the eardrum that's shed, you know, there'll be layers of that. And that one comes. And these are the little bits up here that I don't, I think this might be the last bit, I didn't manage to get every single bit of this bit. Look, you can see even down there it's still really spongy. Because I think... I'd have been pushing my luck, I think. If I'd have stayed in there any longer, sure, I would have liked to get every little bit. I know, here we go, this is the very last bit. But we can see 90, 95% of the eardrum there. Um, and I've given her a treatment plan to, to do these uh, drops every couple of weeks. And I'm sure that will help to clear up the rest of this naturally on its own. But I just wanted to get that last little bit there. Like I said, a few little bits there. Don't all shout at me. I've been doing this for like nearly an hour and a half now. And uh, I, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm really pleased with how much we've got um, from there. 
considering how bad it was to start with, and it, here it all is. Now, the majority of that is from the first ear that you saw, which was the right ear, because we did most of that with the, with the manual tools. Um, and um, the other one, because it was so slimy in this chewing gum thing, the majority of that disappeared up the tube. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go for a lie down in a dark room. But uh, for now, take care of yourself, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.